In this lesson, I'll show you how to use the variable binding section of the InfoSemantics slider component widget. So to start off with, I already have a slide here with two highlight boxes, one working as a track and the other working as a handle. And in the published movie, we can see here that they work just like a slider because they've already been connected to a slider component widget. However, you may have noticed that just above this slider here, I have a caption reading out a captivate variable called slider one that I've already created. So I'm going to open up my widget and in the variable binding section, there is a field there called variable and there I'm gonna put in the name slider one for that captivate variable. What this has now done is linked this slider widget to that slider variable. What does that mean? Well, let's have a look at the published movie and we'll be able to see. So when the movie starts up, we can see that nothing has seemed to have changed because that variable still equals zero. But now when I move the slider, we can see that the widget is updating that slider one captivate variable with the slider's current position. So if I go back into the widget, we can see that uh, when I started, when the slider was all the way to the left, it was at zero, it was at its minimum. Then when it was all the way to the right, it was at 100 at its maximum. Now I can change this minimum and maximum if I want. So if I change minimum to 100 and then maximum to 200 and click OK, and then go and preview the movie once more, we will see now that when the slider is all the way to the left, as it is here, then it will be 100. But when it is all the way to the right, it will be 200. So the widget is constantly updating this captivate variable with the slider's current position. For example, if I put it roughly in the middle here, it will be at 150. Okay, but it doesn't just work one way. If I then use an advanced action or some other means to change this slider one variable to 150 to 200, then the slider widget is going to update the position of the slider to reflect that captivate variable. So let's just try that now. I'm going to create a button and inside the button here, I'll just make it bigger. I'll call it go to end, uh, give it a bigger text size, 24, I'll center it, yes. And then scroll down here to the success section and I'm going to give it an assign action and assign slider one with a value of 200. Okay, let's test this movie and see how that works. Press F4 and that will give us a preview. So now I can move my slider back and forth, but say I put it in the middle here, then click the go to end button the slider will move all the way to the right edge. Now this actually opens up a lot of possibilities for advanced actions because before there was no way that you're able to really move an object on slide, but now using uh, the slider widgets and uh, linked captivate variables, you can do that. However, where this gets very powerful is where you start using it in combination with other widgets. Now this slider component widget is the first in a series of component widgets that we're building and they're all based on this same theory that it, the interaction that you're doing, whether it's a slider or maybe a knob or filters, they all reflect a captivate variable and by changing the captivate variable you can uh, interact uh, with the interaction there. So let's just take a look at what we could do. Here I have two sliders set up and if I publish the movie there, we can see that they work rather well independently of each other. I just have to move to the next slide here. So the top one will move fine and then the bottom one will move by itself as well. However, the slider one variable hasn't changed because none of these sliders are set up to work with it. So I'm going to update this top widget here, which controls the top slider, so that it now connects to the slider one variable. I'll click OK and then I'll press F8 to preview this slide. And now we can see when I move this top slider, the variable updates, but when I move the bottom slider, it doesn't. Okay, so what would happen if I assigned the bottom slider to work 
with slider one as well as the top slider. Well, let's have a look. I'll go to the bottom widget. I'll uh, get it to connect to slider one. Click OK, and then press F8 to preview this slide once again. And now we can see when I move this top slider, the bottom slider moves along with it. But not that's not all. If I move this bottom slider, then the top slider will update its position to keep in time as well. All the time the captivate variable uh, updates to reflect that position. So this actually opens up a lot of doors as to what you can do and some pretty cool interactions that you can make. Let's have a look at one example. Over here on this slide, I've got a screen with my Outlook there showing my RSS feeds for the Adobe Captivate blog. Now, let's say I had an interaction where I wanted the user to be able to use this scroll bar here to move this rather sizable image that I've got here up and down uh, to be able to look through all the different blog posts. And then they had to choose one, and then they'll go view that blog post. Well, in just vanilla Captivate, there is no way of doing that, not even with advanced actions. But with the slider widgets, there is. So I'm going to copy in a slider widget and we'll start building this interaction. So I already have some images set up here for the scroll bar. There's one called scroll bar handle and just behind it here, that's scroll bar track. So let's set up the widget to work with that. I need this to be a vertical slider. I'm going to get it to work with slider, sorry, scroll bar handle and then scroll bar track. Click OK. Let's have a look at how that works. Press F8 to publish this slide. OK, now I can move that scroll bar up and down. You can see that it's actually scrolling over the top of these scroll bar buttons here. We'll fix that in the next lesson, but it'll be OK for this one. Now that's all fine for the scroll bar, but how are we going to get this section in the middle here to move up and down? Well, here's where we need to think a little creatively. What if this moving section here was just a handle to a very big slider, and then this highlight box that I've got here behind it, extending all the way up here and all the way down to the bottom there, was the track for this ginormous slider? Well, that might work. Let's have a go. I'm going to copy in a new widget and uh, the this image here is called mail handle and the track behind it is called mail track so let's open up that widget this is going to be another vertical slider it, I'll call it uh, mail handle and mail track there and in order to get it to move at the same time as the scroll bar does we're going to need to connect these two to the same variable i'm going to connect it to a variable called slider 2. now i actually haven't created a captivate variable called slider 2 but as long as this variable id is the same uh, it's going to connect to any other widgets even if the captivate variable doesn't exist okay so we'll go into the other widget and we'll connect it to slider 2 as well Click OK. Right, now let's uh, publish this slide by pressing F8 and we'll have a look at the result. Okay, so now when I move my slider down, we can see that this image behind it is moving as well. However, we do have a problem. When I move the scroll bar up, the image behind it is moving up and when I move it down, it's moving down. But the way this interaction usually works is that when I move the scroll bar down, then this list of blog posts would move up. That's the way we usually see this work in a program such as Outlook. So how can we get our widgets to replicate this form of interaction? Well, actually quite easily. Let's just jump back to this uh, early example that we had here. And we've already seen how these two sliders updated their position and they always kept in line with each other. But if I open up the bottom slider here and then in the variable binding section, I check this reverse polarity check field. What this is going to do is invert the way that the slider widget reads the attached captivate variable. Let's have a look at what that does. If I press F8 now, it'll bring up the published movie. And when I move the top slider, 
you can see the bottom slider moves in the opposite direction and vice versa. If I move the bottom slider, the top slider will move oppositely as well. So all we have to do is go back to our slide over here, open up the uh, bottom widget here and I'm going to change it to reverse polarity. Click OK and then press F8 to preview this slide. And in the published movie, when I move the scroll bar down, the uh, image moves in the opposite direction. So that's how you use the variable binding section of the slider component widget, a very powerful section. In the next lesson, I'll show you how we can clean up this interaction a little by using some of the extra features inside the slider widget.